Hey, today I want to talk about the performance of my MacBook Pro 2021, the 32 gig version with the M1 Max 32 GPU cores. And yes, of course, you saw quite a few performance tests and benchmarks and whatnot, but I want to talk about my projects, my day-to-day -day edits, the short ones, the longer ones, and how does it translate from my 2018 Mac Mini with the eGPU to the new MacBook Pro and what the difference really is, uh, if I feel the difference, what numbers I got. I mean, I also did what certain YouTubers did, just a bunch of 6K and 8K clips and putting them in and no real meaning and show numbers. I did that as well, just to see how the difference between the Mac Mini and the new MacBook Pro is for that kind of stuff. Usually I don't edit 6K or 8K footage. We still shoot 4K and 1080p, 100 frames per second and deliver mostly 1080p for our clients and stuff like that. So yeah, I wanted to see how this uh, translates. So I have numbers as well, but also um, Apple compressor and handbrake. I will talk about that and uh, see how that performs on the new MacBook Pro. Anyways, let's dive in and see how the numbers are. I really wanted to see how this uh, machine handles 8K and 6K and I didn't really have any footage of my own, so I downloaded all those test clips. Everybody can download those on the DJI website. This is basically Ronin 4D footage and yeah, put on a look with Cinematic and also had for every shot basically a lot also applied. This is not rendered and this is on better quality and playback performance even with four screens connected here is amazing it's yeah playing back and no issues here and i have screen recording running as well so this is amazing and export times for this little test project uh, on the Mac Mini, it took six minutes and five seconds, and on the new MacBook Pro, one minute, seven seconds. And this project is just over two minutes, so pretty good improvement there. By the way, all the uh, timing and tests I did with Chrono X. This is basically a little app that runs an export, and you also could run this test three times in a row and it will time the export, it does everything automatically. It runs a little script and with the pro version you actually get a spreadsheet with the numbers and more data about this test, what projects and what machine and whatever. So this keeps it really precise and doesn't involve having a timer on the iPhone running and yeah, it's really precise. Okay, next up is this 20 minute two camera interview setup edit, um, some behind the scenes as well. It's basically all FS7 footage with some ProRes master files here and there. Quite a bit of audio going on. This one was really, really slow on my 2018 Mac Mini. This project exported in 40 minutes, more than 40 minutes, 43 minutes and 11 seconds. So this is quite intense for this 20 minute edit. And with the new MacBook Pro, I mean, <laughs> it's it's almost funny, three minutes. So there we go, big improvement there. Then I also had my old A7S Mark III 4K to 4K um, edits. This was just a test project I did back in my eGPU days. So I have this also with the Mac Mini M1. So export time for this one minute, 20 second Insta edit basically with the Mac Mini eGPU, it's yeah, two minutes. With the M1, it actually was not really faster, a bit slower somehow. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And with the new machine, it's also quite funny. 46 seconds. 
I also had this other project here that uh, I tested with the eGPU and with the M1 back in the days. It's a two minutes complex edit FS7 project, um, but also drone footage in there with ProRes from the DJI Inspire. All kinds of resolutions and frame rates. And with the Mac Mini eGPU, seven minute export time. With the M1, it was a bit faster, not too bad. And with the new machine, it's even faster. Um, big difference here. And another one of my real world project is this little graffiti film here. It's almost four minutes long. Mixed media is 4K, FS7, A7 R Mark III, drone footage from a Phantom 4, all kinds of different codecs and frame rates. And yeah, I did also test this project coming from an SSD and having it on a traditional hard drive. And even though those graphs look quite dramatic, the export difference is like eight seconds. So it doesn't really matter if you have an SSD or a traditional hard drive, at least for export time. So what I did next is also look into exporting those ProRes master files into an H.264 for YouTube and stuff like that. And I used Handbrake and Final Cut Compressor. Handbrake because I use this for quite a while now and I think it's the more efficient encoder in terms of bitrate to file size and the quality of the final video. So yeah, I did this. I tested the basic YouTube 1080p preset they provide, but it basically didn't really use too much GPU because it's more a CPU based encoder. But I also used the video toolbox, so it should use the GPU or the video encoding engine a bit more, which it basically did. The CPU performance or usage did go down, but on the other hand, the GPU performance or usage did not go up, but I don't think the tool that I use to monitor the GPU usage is accounting for the media engine. So yeah, not quite sure what's going on there. But then again, it didn't really improve too much. It was basically the same time. And also I have my own preset made in Handbrake. That is a two pass encoding. 10 megabits um, and yeah, it takes quite a bit and doesn't really seem to use all the resources too much. So it could be that this handbrake should be more optimized for the new machines anyways. And Apple compressor is a bit faster, of course, with the standard YouTube preset. I also did encode in Final Cut directly with this compressor preset, but it took a bit longer because I think it also has to do the audio encoding stuff at the same time. So I actually deactivated all the audio plugins in Final Cut and it is basically the same time. And here we have a look on the file sizes with the one pass YouTube preset, you get the lowest, but then again, the quality is not the best. Video toolbox is not as efficient, I think, because it's the H.264 encoder and not the X.264. And with my two pass, it's almost 300 megabytes. But then again, it's a higher bit rate. And the Epic compressor, multi-pass YouTube preset is quite a bit bigger. The bit rate is a bit higher as well, around 1200 instead of 10. But then again, uh, yeah, it's almost 127, 130 megabytes more. So hand track is more efficient with the encoding and it still looks a bit better or as good as the Apple compressor. And also I did a quick test because I heard some numbers that the new machine is actually slower in terms of encoding H.264. And I did have some old data with my Mac Mini, with the eGPU, with the Radeon 7. So I did use this one minute and 20 seconds Instagram edit, uh, 4K ProRes to a 4K YouTube H.264. 
and with the Mac Mini it was one minute. And surprisingly, with this 4K export, the M1 Max using a ProRes master file actually was slower. But the surprise is when you encode to 1080p with the Radeon 7 eGPU, it took one minute 19 seconds. So basically the same than before. And with the new Mac, it was quite a bit faster. So there's something going on with the 4K encoding and 1080 encoding, not quite sure what is going on, but yeah, it, it really matters if you export 1080p or encode 1080p or 4K. So there you have it. For the shorter projects, the difference is actually not that big. It really depends on what codec you use, what plugins you use, what effects you use, what color grades you use, hard drives, not so much actually, but the overall performance while you edit, when you look through footage, when you do your selects and have other stuff open at the same time, um, it really is a difference. Uh, and for the longer projects, of course. Anyways, that's it. That was my quick benchmark real work test stuff. So if you have any specific questions about this MacBook Pro or something I should test out, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Tschüss. Good night. Auf Wiedersehen. Goodbye. Uh, back to work.